Welcome to Food for Thought. I'm Deirdre Anderson with Delish Personal Chef Services. And I'm Laura Mangone with Chambers Walk Cafe and Catering in Lawrenceville. And we are on panjradio.com. That's correct. Hello. <laughs> How hello, are you, hello. Deirdre? I am doing well. Did How are good, you? Did you have a good week? Kinda. Yeah. Good. <laughs> well, wink, okay. wink. Okay. Laura actually knows what kind of week I've had. I'm, but some things are a little bit TMI for the radio. Yes. You know what I'm we saying? Don't, we don't need to go there. They don't need to know the deep, dark, dark secrets, secrets of that our I have. lives. <laughs> we just have to be these personal, this just fabulous food personalities. You know, I love, I love lives. that because uh, my life, I have to be on all the time. Mm-hmm. Okay. As a chef, Mm -hmm. as a fitness instructor, Mm -hmm. as a radio host. Try being a wife. (laughs) I have to be on. (laughs) So you can't, like, if you're going through something like serious depression and anxiety. Oh, there there I said it. (laughs) Um, You You keep it all in. You have to hide it. You have to, you know, until, unless you have days where you can't. So... One time, I'll never forget, I was uh-huh. in one of these periods, okay? And I'm, I'm as you know, everyone mm-hmm. might not know, but I also teach a lot of Zumba. Mm-hmm. So I was having the worst day. Oh, gosh. And I was so out of it. I didn't mm-hmm. even know how I could teach the class, but I got myself mm-hmm. to the class. I taught the class. Well, I and then faked it. Then I jumped around smiling. Starts, right? Somebody came yeah. up to me after class. Anita, remember Anita yeah, yeah, Benefield? Yeah. Yeah. She came up to me after class and she said, Wow, D, you were on fire tonight. Yeah. And I'm looking at her, and, and the bubble above my head was He's saying, saying, I was in the fetal position like <laughs> an hour and a half ago. But that's awesome. But that's energy. That's you, you know, that's, I think, you know, one of the beautiful things about uh, being physically active. It can pull you to places where you don't think you're going to go. Well, it sometimes <laughs> does, and sometimes it doesn't. Right. Well, but um, it's a benefit, it's a good thing. But anyway. But anyway, I digress. Yes, we were going to talk about <laughs> Egyptian food, I think. Yes, and we or are Greek food. We, or... um, yes, and my crock pot, which I love. <laughs> so we'll start with um, Egyptian, and I want to talk about dukkha okay. because that was my. Go for it. I actually discovered this. My the woman who um, I work with mm-hmm. in Princeton. She's the house manager, but she also works as a chef, quote unquote chef right. for another family. Okay. And they're pretty, they're very adventurous, like more than even my Princeton clients. Right. So she gets to have well, that's fun. Good. And she said, Oh, I made this soup mm-hmm. uh, for my client. I got to tell you about it. Mm-hmm. And she, she does, she does everything from a recipe. Right. So she's not, so she has, a, she has enough common sense to do. What to, is her heritage? Is she, I don't know. Is she American? Is she? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but she told me about this soup, and it was a roasted carrot soup mm-hmm. with dukkha. Yummy. And I had never heard of dukkha, and mm-hmm. she explained to me. Now, the re- I know the recipe that you're going right. to look up is slightly different, but my, this recipe called for uh, pistachios, mm-hmm. so a different nut than yours. Well, yeah, you can put – you can. it's primarily a nut of some sort. A nut of put, some sort. Yeah, I, yeah. I like the pistachio idea. Yeah. Anyway, and it also had uh, – Cumin seeds, mm-hmm. coriander seeds, mm-hmm. fennel seeds, Yum. love, black peppercorns, mm-hmm. and so all of these uh, seeds. So you you toast the you take a frying pan and right. you kind of roast the 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 pistachios first, put them right. aside. Right. Then you take the the seeds. Now this is one thing I do. I cut corners all the time. Mm-hmm. I cut corners all the time. I typically do not grind my own spices, but I'll tell you what: mm-hmm. if I'm cooking for an Indian oh, you client, have to. Yeah. I will roast. I will grind it's my own spices difference. because they will be able to tell. Absolutely. Most people can't. They won't yeah, appreciate it, so light, I'm not doing light, it. It's light years, but it's you toast your it own. really yeah. is infinitely better when you Absolutely. toast. And I feel sometimes I feel guilty for not doing it for everybody, mm-hmm. but whatever. Yeah. Screw them. It's just it's just <laughs> such a nice I mean, I'm looking at a couple of recipes here and it's just such a beautiful spice. You can really use it on anything. And yeah, and so you take the so you grind mm-hmm. the spices, but then you um this particular recipe said to kind of pulse the 
the pistachios. You know, you want right. you don't want a, like a what total a, puree of pistachios. You want like little right. like chunks of pistachio. Mm-hmm. Right. And so you put it. You make the roasted carrot soup, which is a pretty basic. So you roast the carrots. Mm-hmm. You've got some garlic. Roast. I would I would roast it with whole cloves of garlic. Right. And and then uh, vegetable stock. Onion. Um, onions, sautéed onions. Right. It was a basic Mirapla, recipe like that. Mirapla. Yes, yep. and then um, so you've got this pureed soup, mm-hmm. and then you put a, a little, you know, tablespoon of dukkha and mm-hmm. then a little bit of yogurt. Sounds good. And delicious. I just thought, I thought maybe so finish it with maybe a little lemon juice mm-hmm. or something like that. Might might so, be nice. So um, when we go away with uh, some friends of ours, Eddie and JP, he JP who was Greek. Um, makes a, con- a a spice mix that's pretty similar to dukkha, and he puts it on everything. Like he what? rubs like- it on a fillet, but it's highly seasoned with uh, you know a ton of cumin and coriander and black pepper and star anise and a mm-hmm. lot of mm, really good. He'll do that. Sometimes he'll put it on cauliflower and roast it. This is with the nuts. This is with not always with the nuts, but that okay. high intensity, that, right. that real potent flavor. Like rub. And, yeah, that yeah. rub. Oh, so good. But even just on any you know boring old cauliflower and roast now, there, it. There was something else, and this we were talking about this during the break. Um, mm-hmm last week mm-hmm. but uh dukkha there's also something d u q u a well they're they're which i they're I kind of it synonymous up, it's d u q q a or D-U- maybe it's just a slightly different maybe it's just a slightly different spelling the spelling that particular is- dukkha that i thought i had mm-hmm. which now i can't find it right. but oh here um well, these spellings are either Egyptian or Arabic, so that is the difference between oh, them. Oh, maybe, but, but, but this it's the same one, spice this one called mix. for, a, and I was really confused by this. It's like a condiment, mm-hmm. but there's no oil in it. It called for vinegar, lemon juice, cumin, mm-hmm. and garlic, mm-hmm. and it said to put this in like a big uh, water bottle or something, and then fill it up to three quarters, and then and, and let. Yeah, I said so lemon juice, like steep, right? Yeah. And then fill it up with water. So and you, you steep it. I, I don't, I didn't get yeah, it's it. Like a I didn't steep, really it's understand. It's like a, a um, what's the word? Infusion. Mm-hmm. Love so, infusions. It's like, yeah. a, yum. That sounds good. You Have you ever, splash. speaking of, okay, this isn't really an infusion. I'm going off on a tangent here. We're going to go talk. Can we, we be Portuguese for a second? We can be Portuguese. Have you ever had Piri Piri? No. Or I probably haven't. I didn't know what the na- right. name was. Piri I mean, I've been to enough of those Portuguese restaurants in Newark. I probably had everything on their menu. Piri Piri is a... Uh, is it Portuguese? Yeah, it's got to be. Piri Piri is a... Um, you take hot chili, chili peppers. Yeah. Dried chili peppers. Yeah. And garlic. Yeah. And something else. I got to like, gotta look it up. And you let it, you let it sit in whiskey for mm-hmm. a month. And it just sort of like is this really great, you know, condiment to put on meats and stuff. I have made it several. I haven't made it in many years, but I know I made it a couple, couple different times. And it's pretty huh. delicious. But anyway, is it possible it's African? Piri Piri. It's spelled P I R I P I R I. That's what I'm looking up, and it's African. I always thought, it's African. It's African. Yeah. yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. It's capsaicin. It's it's uh, the the. And it's in whiskey. Chili pepper that's All usually right. steeped. Piri All right. Piri sauce. So I'm a dumbass. Seasoning it's or ma- Oh, I'm sorry. No, it says Portuguese in origin. Sorry. Ha ha ha. You're right. But especially prevalent it. in Angola, <laughs> Mozambique, and South Africa. Okay. So it's made from crushed chilies, citrus peel, onion, pepper, salt, and lemon juice. Mm-hmm. And whiskey. It's got other herbs. And whiskey, right? Sometimes alcohol. Yep. Okay. You, uh, today can be easily made by blending spices and shaking up the ingredients in a jar. Yeah, and it's great because you just yeah. let it sit at room piri temperature piri. They for a month. They actually sell piri piri in a jar. Wow. <laughs> we'll have to find that. And we'll have to find have that. Have a taste test. Okay, I have... Cool. I'm going to go next with... Um, there was a prawns recipe, another Egyptian uh-huh. dish, which was pretty pretty simple, nothing earth shattering. Okay, here here's what I we had this discussion on the other radio show that I do with my brother, right? Who's also a chef. Yeah. And I said, "What's a prawn?" 
Like, okay, what, ma what makes a prawn? I know a prawn is, is the it the size, size of yes, the shrimp that the dictates? Sign. Do you Correct. know what the size is? It's usually larger than a 1620. A 1620 larger, means, for six, those of you that don't know, there's approximately 16 or 20 shrimp per pound. Right. So if you get like extra, extra large shrimp, it's eight to 10. So that means there are eight to 10 shrimp right. per pound. And those are prawns? The large ones, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. That's what we thought, but I just yeah, mm -hmm. and that's what he he. Sometimes really people tell use me. it. Well, I should say it's a subjective thing because some people use prawn as it's from a warm weather area as opposed to a cold yeah, weather see, that's, area. That's so what it's I'm a temperature, right. just like uh, you know certain fish. If they're so north of the equator, they're called this, and south of the equator, you know who this equator, is a question for. That. This is a question for Chef eddie mm -hmm. from the milford oyster house okay he'll know he knows everything right. about seafood and okay. all that well stuff. that's that's pretty much it i mean we can look it up but i'm fairly certain it's not only just size but it's also temperature um you know geographic mm -hmm. so all right so i have this prawns recipe it's got calls for three tablespoons of olive oil three garlic cloves crushed mm -hmm. one teaspoon of paprika I was saying yesterday that I might like to do this with smoked paprika. Okay. Don't you agree? Wouldn't yeah. that give it yeah, more pizzazz? Yeah, absolutely. One teaspoon of ginger, freshly grated. One and a half pounds of large shrimp, mm -hmm. raw and shelled. Mm -hmm. Eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt. Two tablespoons of fresh coriander. Right. Heat the oil in a frying pan. Add the garlic. Saute gently for two to three minutes. This is really difficult to read this recipe because it's it's I'm scrolling down forever. Okay. Don't you love and sites like that? Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's almost as bad as when they give you something and it's in like a slideshow. So we don't <laughs> we don't we don't need to we actually go through the recipe. recipe. No, uh, the, the ingredients it's pretty and, you add yeah. the gar you add the garlic to the yep. pan and the shrimp and the spices mm -hmm. and that's and you're done. Sounds delicious. Yeah. It can't be like so your like, turn, Egyptian. My turn, Egyptian, or can I go to my warm weather favorite thing to do in the winter? Cold weather, sorry, I said warm weather. Are we going to crock pots already? I want to, but I no, miss my crock Okay, pot. we still have plenty <laughs> to talk about in I, terms of Egyptian and Greek. Okay. We need something for the next segment. Okay, good lord, okay, you're so stifling here, my process. I want to talk... <laughs> Okay, I want to talk hear? about baba ganoush. Okay, baba ganoush. I love baba ganoush. Okay. Baba ganoush is delicious. You uh, take your eggplant, and I usually put a little bit of oil on the outside of it. I just cut it in half, okay. and I oil the skin so it doesn't dry out or get too charred. And I roast it at 375 degrees. Sometimes I put a little salt on it, but I don't usually need to. Okay, let, let me stop you right there. Okay. Because, and I, that's always the way I do it too. Uh-huh. I, I was I was scouring the internet for different recipes for baba ganoush, and there was one that claimed to be the best in the world. Okay. So, of so course, I, I had to check it out. And first, what they do stuff? is mm -hmm. they put it um, right under the, the fire on the, on the broiler first. Or salamander, as we call it in the or restaurant salamander. industry. <laughs> um, and then they, they lower it down mm -hmm. and roast it the normal way. But I thought char. I want the, for some extra char. I thought that was a good idea. Yeah, I don't like the extra char. You don't? No, All right, I, I guess it's I don't like taste. it to be super smoky. I don't like that extra because I think it's flavorful without. Okay, so then you roast the eggplant. I and roast the you... eggplant and then I scoop it out. Mm -hmm. And then it's basically like you're making a pesto. You can put oil in it. You can put uh, nuts in it. You can put some cheese in it. Really? Sometimes I put feta in it. Interesting. Seasonings. Now, mm -hmm. I, I do, I think, it's a more of a classic the one. And it was mm -hmm. interesting yesterday when I did the radio show with Johnny Boy. Yeah. He was remembering because he worked at a restaurant in, called Fez in mm -hmm. uh, Arizona. Mm -hmm. And they had baba ganoush on the menu. It wasn't, was it Moroccan? Fez would imply Moroccan, um, right? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I think a Fez is Moroccan. Anyway, uh -huh. so he, the baba ganoush that he made... He said, once you, you mash that eggplant, yeah. you got to add a bunch of lemon juice right away. And I go, why right away? And he goes, yeah. so you don't forget. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I think his point was that the lemon juice is so integral right. in the, the babagunashit. And, and it should be fairly significant. Yeah. 
It like is. Like a little l- lemony. It and should also, be lemony. And yes. garlic. Mm-hmm. And uh, cumin. Cumin. I don't always put a lot of cumin in it, though. I would rather taste the lemon and the garlic than a highly seasoned... And again, food is so subjective. Like, I yeah. might like it a little more char. You might like it a little exactly. more lemon. Like So... Can we talk about tzatziki sauce? Can we transition into Greek right now? We can transition into Greek. I have an issue with a woman who did not like my tzatziki sauce. Why not? What's wrong? And I was like, well, Biatch, I like my tzatziki sauce. We hate that woman. And I don't (laughs) care what you think. Who? Was this a client? This is a client that if she calls me back to work for her, I will say, sorry, but never in a million years. You were a nightmare. What? Was it a Greek menu? Or no, was the, what it was, was the just tzatziki uh, the tzatziki was, was I can't forget what something? it was. Yeah, it was just one of the dips. Yeah. And she said that I had way too much garlic in my tzatziki. It's the tzatziki not sauce is not to supposed have to have a lot of. I was like, I want to kill her. Really? I mean, you're telling me? Well, you know, some people like a ton of garlic and some people like just a hint of garlic. I actually am. It depends I'm on a what it is. Fiend. I know you are, but I'm not always. <laughs> so it depends on what it is. Okay. And sometimes I think, not you, but I know I've been to restaurants where it's so garlicky that you can't taste anything else. Right, and I don't. I don't believe that that's what it was. I know right. what you're saying, right. and, and I, I, I did not like use my, that much like of my a significant grandmother garlic. Was from northern, like her family was from. I mean, she was from New York originally, but. My great grandmother from the Genoa region, region in northern Italy, they don't use a lot of garlic. It's just a hint. It's not like if you went to an Italian restaurant and it's sliced like a vegetable. Right. It's more like just a hint, a condom. It, right. It's just there. And there's a some things, bit. and I do, I but do tzatziki think needs, that tzatziki, it okay, needs as garlic. opposed to as opposed to pesto. Now, yeah. pesto to me that doesn't I have want, to be so garlicky. I, well, mm. I put pretty significant garlic in pesto. But I put it in or or too. in. Um, uh, chimichurri. Well, that pretty I would, significant yeah. garlic, but because something it's got like tzatziki, overpa- not overpower, but it's got to compete that's with those other spices right. that are in there. A tzatziki is a light sauce. You know, it doesn't have to have right. a ton of anything. It's a light, you know, so lemony, yeah, so vinegary, cucumbery. You know, it's a light thing. It's supposed to lighten up whatever you're putting on it. Whether you're putting it on a gyro, which I just had a gyro, de- which I just had a debate with. Our producer, I, I have to say, Rob, gyro, not gyro, and yeah. gyro. Then, no, that's like saying lasagna. You're, it's, it's a Greek word I, that should be pronounced. I have a gyro. confession to make. Okay. Get the G out of there. I have been to it's like spelled that way <laughs> to uh, either food trucks or something uh-huh. where there was a gyro, and I always, throughout the years, I kept forgetting what the pronunciation right. was so i just wouldn't order well, it i was too embarrassed i know well most people say gyro i mean like probably 90 i was too embarrassed because i could never remember this, the pronunciation gyro. it is just like you know the word lasagna now if Italian, i just think you've you told me a way G. to remember and that is just why yeah just pr- pronounce it like or it start starts to with say a y or how about gnocchi same thing <laughs> Right? You don't say gnocchi. It's got a little G in there, a little gnocchi. Gnocchi. Well, that's because that's the Italian. So the G is pronounced a little bit there. It's Italian. Okay. It's different than Greek. (laughs) It's Greek to me. Okay, so Greek. Speaking of Greek. Yeah. Love Um, Greek. I, when I had my restaurant, mm-hmm. one of the items in the restaurant, and this goes back to the reason why I was inspired when I was 20 years old. Mm-hmm. I lived in Chicago, and mm-hmm. they had Greek town. Mm-hmm. And so it was like Greek restaurants everywhere, yeah. and yeah. it was awesome. Mm-hmm. And so one of my favorite tableside dishes of all time mm-hmm. was saganaki. Saganaki? Yes. I have you ever had it? I don't. I um, probably have. I just okay. don't know what the, what the so name was. So you take the cheese. It's called Cassetti cheese. Oh. K-E-S-S-E-R-I. Mm-hmm. And it is a, um, not a, not a goat cheese. What is it? Sheep. 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 It's like a sheep Romano. Milk. So yeah. imagine like a Romano that's a little milder. It's the fried cheese, right? Right. With so a, you, yeah. you soak it in milk. Yes, I can. Then it. you flour it. Mm-hmm. You fry it in mm-hmm. olive oil. Mm-hmm. You then uh, ignite it. Uh, mm-hmm. You put pour on some metoxa, which is a Greek dry brandy. Right. You light it, mm-hmm. and when you light it, you go oompa. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you extinguish the flames with lemon juice. Mm-hmm. And then you take that and all this delicious juices Yum. and you eat it on crusty bread. Yum, it's uh-uh. Delicious. 
yes, I've had that it before. I never like, knew that was the name of it. That, that was my favorite. I always say, that's delicious Greek stuff. <laughs> that delicious cheese, Greek stuff. The fried che- We used to call it fried cheese. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got it. And the best part is, oompa, oompa, which I forget. I think that means like, oompa, all right. Oompa. It's oompa. Us, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Usually so, smashing dishes is involved in Greece. So that, with, but when I you're sort screaming. Of, when I... And, and maybe you just need to inspire me a little bit here, but when mm-hmm. I the, the farther I start to think about Greek cooking, I'm like, okay, Greek salad, mm-hmm. I think feta cheese. I think eggplant and moussaka and lamb. Mm, there you go. Yummy. Moussaka. So it's moussaka? I, say, I always call it moussaka. I've always said moussaka. And you say moussaka, I say moussaka. My aunt Eve was Greek, and she used to say moussaka, so moussaka? I think that's where I got it from. Yeah. Laura's correcting all my improper <laughs> um, pronunciations. Culinary terms. <laughs> Sorry. Like concasse. For years, I called it concasse. 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 Um, yeah. Oh, gosh. And aunt Eve's... Oh. Moussaka, so good, so good. Just um, go through the recipe for a good moussaka. Sure. Um, actually, you would. Um, she always left the skin on the eggplant, which I kind of love loved. That. I, I love that the skin on element. the eggplant. We had this conversation. I had this conversation with Rob last week about eggplant and how much he doesn't right. like it. Right. He's got an issue over there I, with the eggplant. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> so you slice a uh, eggplant. And you roast it. You just a little bit of olive oil, salt and pepper. You don't have to do the whole salting, draining, that whole concept, which I never got. I mean, I just don't agree with that. My brother would argue with you. We had a big discussion about this, about what is it called? So I called it... um, but he called it something when you st- when you do the the draining. No, he called it a name. He called it a culinary name. Really? I forget what it was. The salting and draining of it. Right. Huh. He said he said that it that Let was me a very think. anyway it'll come to me anyway going. you slice your eggplant you on a, a sheet with olive oil you can salt and pepper it and you roast it and meanwhile in another pan you are sautéing onion um, you are browning pouring off you know any uh, drippings from ground lamb that you have browned. You so you have that together. You can put a little bit of tomato product. Is it always made with lamb, or is yes, it sometimes made always. with beef? Okay, usually lamb. Okay, in Greece anyway. Right. Um, then you put a little bit of tomato product. It doesn't have to be super tomatoey. I mean, I have had it in the states where it's super tomatoey. It's not like bolognese sauce. Mm-hmm. And then you, um, meanwhile, so you have your onions and. Uh, Sauteed lamb, ground, browned lamb with a tomato product in it, kind of chunky. Mm-hmm. Then you have your eggplant that's been roasted, so it's sort of uh, mm-hmm. weak and wilted. Mm-hmm. And then you have a bechamel sauce. Bechamel, you make a roux right. with flour and butter. You put uh, milk in it, cream it. Usually right. you put uh, some nutmeg in it. Yeah. And then you layer, just like you're making lasagna. You layer eggplant, lamb, meat. Eggplant, lamb, and then the bechamel goes on top. Okay, here's my question. Mm -hmm. Can you freeze it? You can freeze it. You can freeze it at that point, or you can even bake it. Or you can bake it first and then freeze. Either or. And you cook it like a lasagna. So 375, maybe 45 minutes to an hour, depending on how thick you make it. You let it sit for a little while before you cut it, just like you should with a lasagna. And you're good to go. It's delicious. Cool. Sounds amazing. Delicious, you mean... Delish. Sorry. Sorry. It's delish. <laughs> All right. We're, we're running out of time. Yeah. We are going to go to break. When we come mm-hmm. back, we are going to talk about crockpot recipes. Because it's still a little chilly out. It's still a little bit chilly. And it's still. nice to come home to a meal already done. And uh, we will probably talk about something else, too. I just okay. don't know what. Yeah. But we, always, we seem to you. always come up with something. We do. <laughs> we could just talk to the telephone poles. Yep. Okay. We'll be right back. Join us on the first Thursday of each month for Network Lambertville in Lambertville, New Jersey, the most productive open networking group in our area. At Network Lambertville, we serve award-winning wines this month from La Vie, importers of fine Italian wines from Sicily, a fully catered meal created by Bitter Bob's Barbecue of New Hope, Pennsylvania, and fabulous desserts by Podge Cakes of New Hope. Network Lambertville is held at Green Birdie Productions Green Screen Studio at 21 Bridge Street in Lambertville, New Jersey. 
Networking with wine and past appetizers starts at 6 p.m. with dinner served at 7.30 p.m. All networkers get one minute with microphone to talk about their business to the group. There is no fee to join Network Lambertville, but we do ask for a $20 tax-deductible donation at the door to help cover expenses. Network Lambertville has over 450 members, but we do limit attendance to the first 50 guests. So please log on to www.networklambertville.com now to sign up and for more information. See you at the next Network Lambertville on Thursday, February 4th, starting at 6 p.m. PANJ Radio serves Mercer, Bucks, and Hunterdon Counties and the world, and we want to serve your business on our airways. Commercial rates start at just $50 for a 30-second spot on your favorite PANJ show. We run your ad not just once, but up to seven times in a one-week period. That's a lot of bang for your buck online. We will track the number of listeners your commercial gets so you can measure how many new customers you get from airing it with us. For more information, please contact Rob at panjradio.com or call 609-460-4550. We can't wait to bring your company new local business on PANJ Radio. It's all authentic comfort food at Bitter Bob's in New Hope. Bob serves mouth-watering barbecued pork and chicken dishes, signature sloppy sandwiches, homemade cornbread, macaroni and cheese and collard greens, all the great southern dishes you crave for. Bob serves weekend brunch, lunch, and dinner, BYOB, with an outside patio that is dog-friendly, and he has a kid's menu. Great desserts, too. And Bob can cater any event, big or small. Tell the waitstaff you heard this commercial and get 10% off. Bitter Bob's in New Hope, PA. Authentic comfort food for your family. Me, 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 me. (laughs) First we drink Drink, and drink drink, and drink drink, and drink and drink and drink and drink. drink, Then we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight. And we drink, we drink, we drink, we drink and drink and drink and drink. And we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight, we fight. There we go. Happy St. Patrick's Day from the Shack Radio. There you go. Best Irish song I know. (laughs) You are now Irish. Welcome back to Food for Thought. I'm Deirdre Anderson with Delish Personal Chef Services. And I'm Laura Mangone with Chambers Walk Cafe and Catering in Lawrenceville, New Jersey. And we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have a little change of pace here. Okay. Because you know what happens is sometimes, you know, we don't do there are no real Rules. producer, <laughs> you know, to you know, create content for us. Right. And we're not this really? is just our brains spilling this is over just our onto brain the airways. Spilling over, and I have exactly. always l- given myself mm-hmm. the option to talk about something other than food. Yeah. And but in this particular story, yes. I do have a food segue. Okay. Well, let her rip. The go food ahead. segue is kind of right in the middle of the story, though. Okay. So I'm going to have to go like story, food segue, back to the. I'm other sure thing. our listening audience <laughs> will be thrilled. Okay. Did you hear how I almost said New York audience? Oh, it your Brooklyn came out. Came it out. almost came out. I almost oh said God. audience. You almost said coffee. Oh, my gosh. Um, <laughs> so, Match.com. <laughs> yep. A million years ago, right? Yep. And I, this guy reaches out to me from Hawaii, and I'm like, okay, dude, why are you reaching out to me? I'm in New Jersey. You know, nothing's going to happen here. Right. And he said, well, basically, I did a criteria search um, of what I wanted, and like 20 women popped up, and I emailed all of them, and you're the only one that responded. You're my ideal mate. So that's why <laughs> that's frightening I'm right contacting there. Just you. stop. <laughs> so we started talking, mm-hmm. and... Before you know it, we're talking like every day, twice a day, and we're becoming like sort of somewhat infatuated with one another, even though we've never met. Right. 
He flies out to New York to oh meet me. Gosh. I have never been so nervous in my life. My you, body was shaking. Out. Time out. Did you see a picture of him? Yes, of course I okay. did. Okay. So he was and like, well, let me like tell a normal, you, he definitely person. sent a picture that was a few years old <laughs> and a few pounds ago. Okay. Okay. Well, he's but not he was a, send you his so fatty pic. The, the, I remember the first time I was really starting to like him, but I had he had no pics on his thing, and I said, you know, um, I'm going to need a picture. Right. So I'll never forget he sent them to me as an attachment, and you okay. know how the pictures like they kind of start coming up incrementally inch right. by inch yes so the, and it started at the bottom so he was so i'm getting revealed. like inch by inch and i'm like oh oh <laughs> this is good Ooh, yeah <laughs> wow and then the face and i was like holy <laughs> shiitake he's hot <laughs> he was real like in I this partic- this picture he was like smoking hot with no shirt on and a and a freaking Labrador next to him. Okay. So he said, what am I made of wood? Best picture. Right? <laughs> he sent his best picture of his life. So when I met him, I was kind of like, oh, he's just a regular guy, but he was, he was handsome. Right. But you know, not like the picture. So anyway, shaking profusely in the airport, like that's how nervous I was. You met him at the airport. Yes. Off his, pl- he's stepping off the plane. Yes. To meet you. Like th- running that's down ner- the, the terminal. That's like nerve wracking. It was so nerve wracking. So we were I both bet. really nervous. So we're walking. And so um, I forget where we stayed, but I think we went back to, I took him back to New Jersey. Uh-huh. We were, um, he was staying at a bed and breakfast. Uh-huh. And um, I remember he was Southern. And I said to him when he planned the trip, I knew this trip was going to cost him a fortune, right. $800 airfare and right. all his yeah. hotels and stuff. Yeah. I said, as a gesture, I would like to pay for your room at the, right. at the B&B. Because then he had planned to go, we were going to go to New York, and uh-huh. he was going to stay in a hotel in New York. Uh-huh. Well, I offered to pay for the B&B, and he, said, and he was had a southern, he was from the south, he had a southern accent, he uh-huh. said, sugar, oh boy. when you're with me, you will not put money in the parking meter. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. He wouldn't allow me to pay for anything, which was such a turn on. <laughs> exactly. I can't even tell you. I know. I was going to say, I was that's like, kind of sexy. So digging that because I've never had that before. <laughs> so we went to, oh, gosh. We went back to New Jersey. We went to the Surgeon's Fill Inn. Uh-huh. Food segue. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Had dinner. Uh-huh. Uh, Naturally, I went back to the B and B with him and slept with him right away. <laughs> oh my god! <gosh. laughs> because okay, okay, we're sharing that's too much. I know how I roll. Because <laughs> I'm kind of a floozy. No, what year is this? <laughs> what year was this? You know, I always say what happens that first summer after your divorce yeah. really should not count yeah. toward it's, your moral yeah, character because you got, you act yeah. a little wacky. What that they, wasn't really. What do they call it in golf? I, after that, I, do, I tend to wait a, to the second date. What do they date. call it in golf, Rob? They call it a, a mulligan, maybe? In golf What's a mulligan? Terms? A mulligan is a do-over. Yeah, so this is it it's like yeah. a mulligan. It yeah, was it a, my mulligan. It doesn't yeah, count. exactly. So we went to, okay, so the surgeons fill in. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what we had, but it was delish. Mm-hmm. And then we went into New York, mm-hmm. and we went to Katz's Deli. It's another food segue. I love Katz's Deli. You can get now. They have the best pastrami, that, best like, corned on the beef, planet, best, best everything. Things, Huge sandwiches, best knishes, best, best everything. everything. And, and we were talking over the break. You can actually get this online now, yeah, so you, you can, can order, order pastrami. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking it's a splurge. It's expensive, but I'm thinking of doing it as uh, a little treat for myself or for us. That would be lovely. <laughs> yeah. Next show, maybe we should do it. Okay. So Sounds anyway, good. next show I'm bringing Musica. Apparently, I can't remember. Where we, I know we must have gone somewhere for dinner, but mm-hmm. I can't remember where we went. Mm-hmm. Fast forward, okay, he goes home. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, I, I like him, but right. I don't know, right. you know, it's attracted to him. And but he I, lives I, in Hawaii. And he lives in Hawaii, but <laughs> right. so then he offers to fly me to Hawaii. I'm like, oh, what? no shiitake, really? Oh my gosh. Yep, he's gonna pay for everything. Holy cow. So right before my restaurant opens, okay, because this is right before the restaurant opens. Uh-huh. I, you know, and I was kind of, I, he was starting to back off a little bit. We were planning it and then he was backing off a little bit. And then I was like, look, my restaurant opens in two weeks. If I don't do it now, it's, um, I'm never going to do it. And right. he's like, okay, okay. So 
to everything, fly out there. Mm-hmm. He's acting really weird. He's oh, not no. coming near me. He's he's keeping his distance. Like before, we were all what like happened? all over each other. Yeah, exactly. He what met the somebody? what the frittata, right? <laughs> right. He said, "Well, I'm sorry. It's just that I I kind of feel like I'm cheating on my girlfriend." What the frittata and I was, is what right. What the frittata he did you say? You there. So <gasps> as it turns out. What? Somewhere in the t- the time between we was in New York and went back to and, and Hawaii, uh, he got back together with his girlfriend. I know, but meanwhile, he's planning flying you and meanwhile, flying, flying you out. Like, yeah. open your yap, silly, and so tell me. <laughs> I'm I'm beside myself. I'm wow. like, what are you talking? We had and then we had gone back to his his apartment, and he was getting frisky with me. And I just said, you know what? I'm out of here. So at five in the morning, I'm out in Kauai, oh okay, which gosh. is a very rural. It's not like it's right. very rural. Uh-huh. And I'm walking, <laughs> trying your, to with, with your my luggage with my little bag, oh my crying, oh okay. No. And so I got, and my phone is almost dead. Oh my god! I'm in the middle of nowhere. Okay, oh. <laughs> I call Lauren, my friend Lauren. I say, Lauren, you got to call information and call me a cab, and I'll right. tell you where I am, because my phone is going to die. And she said, D, just take your phone, go into a restaurant, ask them to plug it in. I said, right. Lauren, there are chickens <laughs> running around my feet right now. There are no restaurants. <laughs> right. <laughs> So I wound up, oh, she, I, she got, she did, she called me a cab, called a cab. and I, w- I went to a hotel oh my gosh. and I just cried and cried. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that he did that. You That's know? terrible. And, um, I did you get some fabulous drank, oh, food? The first day I was like <laughs> by the pool drinking Bloody Marys with dark sunglasses on and crying. <laughs> and then I, oh my gosh. then I took surfing lessons. So I made the best of it. Right. You know? Any good Hawaiian food stories? Not really. I mean, I, di- I didn't. Any good Hawaiian? Did you go to the luau or something? I did not. Eat did a you lot eat of pork? spam? Lots of spam? Well, spam, apparently spam, there's spam. a lot of spam in Hawaii. Yeah. I didn't see that either. Also, Kauai is not like no, it's not the yeah, big island not, or anything. Yeah. It's, it's pretty. So I remember having like, it was more like farm stand type of Very food. Rural. There wasn't a lot. I don't mm-hmm. even remember. I know there must have been a restaurant in the hotel, but right. I don't think it was like good, authentic Hawaiian. I think right. it was like pretty bogus. Right. And I probably wasn't really caring about food at the no, time because I'm I was sure. so it devastated. Sounded, so it I just like it. I probably lost. Well, five what, pounds. A, what a knucklehead! That's terrible. <laughs> the jerk. Although you got a trip to Hawaii out of it, I guess. Did you stay no, your shiitake whole? No shiitake plus a story. Did you story. stay your whole week? Like I stayed stay? the whole time. Yeah, oh, like six so days you got or a whatever trip it was. Out of it. Yeah. He didn't, like, cancel your return ticket, did he? <laughs> no. Okay. No. Yeah, he was a real, that was really a scoundrel thing to do. That is and then totally. he, he claimed that, you know, he felt he was torn. And he claimed that it, it, they weren't quite 100% back. Okay, so you open your mouth before I'm it was getting on a plane. Kind of like an overlap you. kind of thing. He wasn't quite sure where it was going, but there was definitely things happening. Yeah. And then with me, he felt too guilty. All right. Well, to open. cancel my, he didn't want to, he felt guilty. He didn't want to let me down. I'm like, uh, I think you wanted to play the field a little bit, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds it. From my experience well, with men, that's that usually. That is very interesting. Yeah. All right. On to Crock-Pot. On to Crock-Pot. <laughs> it's cold out, people. <laughs> Do you love your Crock-Pot as much as I love my Crock-Pot? Last night, I made the most delicious meal in my Crock-Pot. And I love <laughs> Crock-Pot. Say three times fast. So I love my crock pot and I use it probably, uh, you know, I'll feel like using it and then I'll use it, you know, I'll make something and then maybe next week I'll make something and then, you know, like three three weeks straight and then I put it in the basement and I never see it again for the rest of the winter. (laughs) Do, did you brown your sausage? Uh, I did not brown my sausage in this recipe. Okay. In other recipes, I would because you want that fond, you want the caramelization, you want right. all that f- colors, flavor. This you one want you didn't. All this. this one I did not because it was going to be soupy, stewy. And was I it still in the casing? It or was. Did you take- sti- no, it was still in the casing. And actually, the recipe what I used was was a chicken and fennel and spinach sausage which was very good, but obviously you could do this with Italian sausage, hot, hot sausage, whatever you wanted. Right. And basically, um, yesterday morning, I put in the crock pot uh, for eight links of chicken and fennel and spinach sausage. Okay. Sliced. 
I put in two onions that I sliced, just roughly sliced. I put in a big bunch of kale, which I, you know, cut down the seam and chopped sort of roughly. I got a kale question for you after okay. this. Okay. Okay. And then I put in um, white beans, great northern white beans that I had soaked overnight, just soaked in water overnight, and then I put those in. Put in some chicken stock. And I put my little baby crock pot on low. And I garlic? Le le I put a little bit of garlic, sorry, okay. yeah, a little salt and pepper. Mm -hmm. Put it on low, left the house when I came back, six and a half, seven hours later. One step in the door, smells delicious, dinner is done, right. don't have to do anything. It's like Mabel was there cooking for me all day, and it's really, really good. That's my one of my go-to uh, crock pot recipes. I have quite a few. But go ahead with your kale question. What's your kale, kale question? question. Mm -hmm. um, I overheard a conversation at a party that I catered, mm -hmm. and they were saying, well, you, you know now that it's not good to eat kale raw. Bullshit. Did you what? just... <laughs> you oh, mean bullshit -taki. bullshit taki? sorry. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? I, I don't know. What, did like, they have any... It was like uh, a thing. Substantiating <laughs> reason. I, I forget. You know, they, they read some article or something on Facebook or something, and I was like, really? Well, tell every health food store on the planet I who's now got kale salad. I know. Or All right. Like, that's ridiculous. Okay. So I have a couple other crock pot things that I do very quickly. I happen to think a lot of people like crock pots because they're... You know what, especially in the colder months, you put it on, you forget about it, it's done, you go about your day, you come home, it's literally like someone's there cooking for you. Do you have any low carb uh, crock pot recipes? Actually, yeah. The next, well, hmm. Or could the I next leave out? one. No, the next one. You could leave out on the other two, but on this one, no carb, zero carb. Okay. It's chicken, bok choy, mushrooms, and Asian seasonings, which I love. Now, define Asian seasonings. Uh, sesame oil, garlic, ginger. Okay. Mm, you know, right, traditional. Right, just your basic. Yeah, okay. a little soy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a little ho a splash of hoisin. So what kind of chicken? Uh, I do thighs. or I do On the bone. Or I do a combination of thigh and breast. You don't have to brown it? You don't have to brown it. You could if you wanted to. It does always add an, another element of flavor. You know, the fond when you're cooking that crusty, when you're browning meat and you get that crust on the pan, never throw that out. You always want to keep that, whether you uh, deglaze it with an alcohol or water right, or, or whatever. Water, whatever. That's whatever. important. Mm -hmm. um, but this, I just, uh, chicken, bok choy, nice healthy portion of bok choy, mushrooms, and you can do, you know, oyster or button or portobello, you know, whatever type, criminate, mm -hmm. whatever kind of mushroom you want. And then all those delicious Asian seasonings. I always throw some... Did you just say cremini? I did say cremini, sorry. <laughs> I was... Cremini. I was ah, saying... I was, I was saying... No, I was talking fast. <laughs> and then I always put in um, star anise. A little bit of star oh, okay. anise. I love I that. I use that a lot. I love it. I really love it with uh, Asian seasonings. And that's it, baby. Turn it on low. Leave it. Oh, come I home. Might have to, I might have to do this. That's so good. Then my two go-to um, when we're feeling like we need some protein and we need some starch, I make a, to a turkey pot roast, which I buy a turkey breast, and I roll it and tie it, and that I brown. Wait a minute. Roll mm. it and tie it? I roll it and tie it. A boneless turkey breast. I see. Okay. Sometimes I'll buy an, a, a boned turkey breast, and I'll bone it out, and I'll freeze half, and then I'll use half, because mm -hmm. I do make this recipe you know, during the winter months. I, this is one of our favorites. Mm -hmm. So I season it a little bit in the center. I roll it and tie it, like butcher tie it, with mm -hmm. maybe four you know, strings mm -hmm. across, just to get a nice roast. Mm -hmm. I do brown it. Mm -hmm. Put it in the old crock pot, yeah. and I add mirepoix, which is onion, celery, and carrots. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I add a little bit more carrots, because my husband and I love carrots, and it adds that whole level of sweetness to it. Mm -hmm. And I put some uh, turkey stock or chicken stock in there. I put, I like a lot of fresh thyme in this preparation. And you put it on, you just put it on, and you go away, and you come back. And it's delicious, and it's a turkey, like a turkey roast, like right. a pot roast. Delicious. You could even thicken the sauce if you wanted to. I would take the vegetables out and put them aside and thicken the sauce either with arrowroot or cornstarch or a little roux. Mm -hmm. Oh, yummy. Really so good. 
it's, turkey breast sliced it's, it's, with gravy. It's like basically. a pot roast. Right. Yeah, right. but it's turkey. So cool. low carb. You could, I don't usually, but you could put potatoes in it. I right. usually don't because I don't want this, you know, the carby starchy. Right. Yeah. Right. And the other thing that I make in my crop, crock pot that I love, and this, again, you don't really have to um, brown the meat. You could. It just adds another level of flavor, but I usually don't. And this would be appropriate for next week because St. Patrick's Day is coming up. Right. It's basically Irish lamb stew that is so good that I cube lamb. I'll buy a shoulder or I'll just buy a large roast of lamb. Uh, or you could, you know, you could get lamb cubes. You could get whatever's on sale. You can get uh, mm -hmm. center cut lamb chops and cut it off at the bone mm -hmm. if that's more. I usually get a shoulder. Mm -hmm. um, cut it up. I put it in my crock pot. And again, could brown it. Don't have to brown it. Mirepoix, onions, celery, carrots. Uh, I do put potatoes in this. Okay. And then I also shred about three raw potatoes. And I put that in because it's just it gonna break. Yep, it's gonna break down. It's gonna thicken it. Um, I put a little bit of caraway in it. I put some black pepper the whole in seeds? it. Uh, whole seeds. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sometimes I'll make a sachet out of it because I don't mm -hmm. want if I don't want the seeds in it. Um, just wrap it with puff um, oh, puff pastry. You wrap it with cheesecloth right. so you can remove it later. So you're getting <laughs> the cheesecloth puff pastry. You know, one of those. <laughs> Um, and what else? I actually, I actually do also put a little thyme in that as well. Okay. Yeah, and it's delicious. It's so my good. favorite, I've had mm -hmm. out of all of those, is, would be the chicken. The chicken's good. That sounds I mean, really... the chicken, and you can, you know, you can and you zip it up. And you don't have to brown it. You don't have to brown it. But what is it. the skin like after it's? I don't put the skin in. I do boneless thighs. No oh. skin in there. No skin in there. Uh -oh. oh, that's better to me. Yeah, I was less thinking, fat. I was thinking the skin no, was no, on no, the no, chicken. No, and no, I was skin. Like, no, 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 no. Boneless, skinless thighs. No, not boneless, but skinless thighs. Skinless thighs. Yes, with the absolutely, because you're getting all that flavor. You get a little fat from it, but you don't want all that skin, no. Did you know that there's only a very small increase in fat having a, a thigh versus a breast i know that but the flavor it's only like is a like, gram more uh, fat in, in a chicken thigh and than a chicken the breast. flavors are night and day a chicken breast is like a piece of cardboard you can just yeah. overcook it and it tastes like shiitake but, how do people know which crock pot to purchase um, what do you know we want? What? what are we looking for in a good? Do you know what? They're very. Uh, there's not a lot of choice with the crock pot. They literally are. They have a low or high. They're usually what about the insulated. Size? The size. The one that I have is probably. Um, gosh darn it! I wish I knew. It's prob. It's a Cuisinart. It's oval. It has a black, t a black ceramic base, and I believe it's the model that even has like. Is it like a, a four quart size? It's, or no, I think it's a little bit larger than that. So six quart, maybe. Yeah, maybe six quart. How many people would it serve if you were to fill it up? If I were to completely, fill, well, last night the the soup that I made would serve at least six or eight nice, you know, mm -hmm. entree type portions. It's rather large. Okay. I think the uh, Black and Decker has one that even has uh, like, um, uh, it's got like a rubber gasket around the top and it has like clasps on the side. So if you're traveling with it, because I know a lot of people use their crock pots to make something and they are bringing it to a potluck dinner or something like that. So it's, it's pretty cool. It like clasps shut. It's neat. I love them. I just lo I know it's so Betty Crocker of me, but I love them. Yeah, because they're old school. They're like an electric yeah, appliance. Yeah, it's a slow cooker. It's just a slow cooker. Hey, my grandmother used to use an old, waterless, almost pressure-like looking pressure cooker with a very interesting top. And it's just slow and low and... St I mean, all the flavor gets... Oh, I love it. I love braising. Basically, what you're doing is braising. That's the method. It's moist heat cooking. And it's Doesn't good. braising mean that um, moist remember, heat? Yeah, but it also means that the meat is not, or whatever you're braising, is not a hundred percent covered with the liquid. That uh, the liquid a, is. It could be either or. Braise, really? Braising means uh, there's moist cooking. Braising. Yeah. There's um, broiling, poaching, poaching, and poaching. I was under the impression was just. 
mm-hmm. under the boil so that there's no Simmering. bubbles. Basically so it's like just a simmer without like a simmer, any bubbles coming correct. out. Correct. Mm-hmm. And braising. Yeah. And then there's stew. Stewing. I remember just like, yep. uh, this is years ago. Sautéing. Uh, yeah. Which is just quick, high heat, extremely high heat and quick. I'm going to challenge you on the braising. I'm going to look this up. Okay. Good. It, this is like, we're going back. That's good. 30 years. The way I learned I it was that it's just, it. it's the difference between moist heat and dry heat. Dry heat would be roasting. There's no moisture at all. Right. So you're braising saying braising wet heat. or roasting. It, it's moist heat. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, that yeah. could be right. I don't think the level of moisture has any, or the level of but liquid. Here, they, weren't, they weren't comparing braising with roasting. They were comparing, like, this is all about liquid here. Right. So they were defining poaching versus braising versus stewing. Yeah. And it okay. might have just been those three. So it could be, if given that parameter and the level of moisture, I would agree with you that stewing would be They were t- more trying to distinguish one from the other. Braising According would to not. Wikipedia, braising is a combination cooking method using both moist and dry heat. Typically food is first seared at a high temperature, then finished mm-hmm. in a covered pot at a lower temperature mm-hmm. while sitting in some variable amount of liquid. Ta-da. Variable amount of liquid. Right. It could be deep, could be, it could shallow. Oh, well, yep. I'm wrong. Yep. You're right. No, no. <laughs> no, but I mean, that's, you know, there's a lot of differences. People don't understand the difference between uh, cooking techniques. That's, that's, right. that's why you and I don't need recipes because we know cooking techniques. Right. We know that all you need is the method. You know, need to know how to do something, not what to do, wh- you know, what ingredients to use. You know, you, right. somebody could say to you, the chicken and vegetable stir fry. We don't need to know. You got six ounces of this and seven ounces of that and three, you know, we, cause we know the method. We know we're right. going to be sauteing whether together or separate and then combining and putting a, you know, or deglazing, you know, that's the technique that you right. and I know. Most people don't. Most people think that they need a recipe to follow. Mm-hmm. We, yeah, maybe we'll we'll save this. We're gonna we're running okay. out of time, but there okay. was also one topic I would like to talk about is a food show that's going to be. It's some something in the title pros and cons. And my friend Bruno, who owns the Shaker Cafe, right. was on the show. Oh, I love and him. And he's yeah. on the he's in the last show. But basically, they have two real chefs and mm-hmm. two not chefs. Ah. And then the audience and the judges have to decide based on watching them. When you said technique, it, right. I thought of that. Right. And they have to figure out who are the real chefs and who are the what cons. What is this on? What is this It's on? on the Food Network. You're kidding. No. That is cool. I would love to be on that. <laughs> okay, we're running out of time. Wait. So we'll talk about it next show. Okay. And thanks, everybody, for listening. Mm-hmm. And we, again, are on PANJRadio.com. Food for Thought. We'll see you next week. All righty.